Alright, it's good morning, Gracie's learners. Welcome to our English class. Before we proceed with our lesson for today, I would like to introduce myself first. I am teacher Chell and I will be your English teacher for today. For this morning, before we start with our lesson, we will start first by unlocking difficult words or find the meaning of some unfamiliar words. So we have here 11 words and what you're going to do is find the meaning of these words. So these words are pastry, celestial, magpie, symbol, coward, lavender, moonbeams, frantically, bubbling, fluttered, and shimmering. So this will serve as your motivational activity called match me up. So for the instructions, match the words in column A with their meaning in column B. Okay, so let's start first with number one. So number one is tapestry. What do you think is the meaning of tapestry? Yes, you are correct. Answer is letter K. Have the heavy woven cloth with decorative designs and pictures. How about number two, celestial? Yes, correct. Letter J, it is heavenly. How about number three, magpies? Magpies means, yes, long-tailed, often blackbirds related to the J. So letter I. How about number four, nimble? Nimble means, yes, letter H, Quick and light in motion. How about number five, cowherd? Cowherd means, yes, letter G, one who takes care of a group of animals. Now, how about number six, lavender? Lavender also means color. Yes, very good. Now, it is letter F. Now, for number seven, moonbeams. Moonbeams means, Yes, letter E, rays of light from the moon. How about number eight, frantically? Frantically means, yes, letter D. Letter D, it is marked by and controlled emotions. Now for number nine, bubbling. Bubbling means, letter C, uttering meaningless sounds. And for flutter, wow. number 10, yes, letter B, very good, flat the wings rapidly. How about the last number, shimmering? Yes, letter A, which means sparkling. All right, so you have unlocked the difficult words. Very good, everyone. Now, these words are related to our story for today. So this is a story about two lovers. No? It is a Chinese folk tale about something like puzzling facts of nature. So something that makes us wonder of how and why these things happened. Why there are Milky Ways, why there are shooting stars, why there is night and the light. So in order to find out why these natural things happen, we will be reading a folk tale called The Seventh Sister, retold by Cindy Chan. So I bet you already have an idea or you have read this somewhere in your book. So I'm just going to read a summary about this story. Okay, so long ago, there were seven beautiful maidens that wove the glorious tapestry of the night sky. Celestial magpies spread the tapestry over the earth, but the sun's early rays melted the night. So the maidens' nimble fingers had to fly across their looms to complete their task before sunset. All the sisters were known for their beauty and talent, but the youngest May was the cleverest. She made silks finer than the fluffiest clouds and cloth more colorful than the brightest birds. But May was sad and lonely, and her sad song echoed through the sky. Meanwhile, in the grassy lowlands of China, there lived a cowherd named Tang. He ate a meal of porridge and tea before he would begin his long day in the fields, plowing and tilling the soil with his only companion, an ox. 
So one evening, Changur stood up on the bank of a small gentle stream and talked with his ox. I am not a hobby, but I do not know what I am missing. Perhaps the answers are in the stars. Then he leapt into the sky and filled the air with the sweet, sad songs of his flute. As night fell, the sky turned from blue to lavender and Chang drifted off to sleep. He dreamed that a magpie flew to him and spoke. Happiness shall be yours, gentlemen. Follow the willow trees to the silver plant where the rainbow ends. There, save the maidens, gather water to brighten the stars in the sky. The youngest and fairest is May. She will remain with you if you remember one thing. You must hide her magical outer robe, for without it, she cannot return to the heavens. With that, the magpie flew away. So Chang walked with a start. He looked at his ox resting in the still waters. I know of no magical ponds, Chang said softly. Perhaps it is only a silly dream. He patted his ox fondly. We need to be on the lookout for magical ponds, laughed Chang as he stared into the night. The next morning brought a soft misty rain. Chang set off through the witness toward a distant field and passed in a small pond by the willow tree. Then the morning's mist began to turn into a rainbow and beneath the rainbow were seven maidens chatting and singing. The each maiden was filling a jar made of moonbeams with water from the pond. Chang thought that the youngest was the fairest of all, so he said, My life would be complete if this fair maiden were part of it. Chang noticed seven ropes upon the trees in the distance and remembered his dream with a bug by so he grabbed the most delicate robe and hid it. As the afternoon shadows grew longer, a magpie song rang through the willows. One by one, the maidens took their outer robes and flew back to their celestial homes. All except for May. Her outer robe was nowhere to be found. Chan could not bear seeing May crying, so he stepped out and played a soft song to May. May sang about her unhappiness and later on, they began singing love songs. They were very happy that they didn't notice the sun rising early than the usual morning. So that day, the sun was scorching hot. Chang knew that it was already evening, but the sun did not move a bit. The sun is angry, the landowner said. It is past 8 o'clock in the evening, yet the sun does not move. We must have displeased her. But what have we done? What can we do? <coughs> Chang arrived home to find May sipping a cool cup of tea. He asked her what happened to the sun. May burst into tears. It is my fault, she said. The sun is angry with me. What do you mean? Asked Chan. Without my help, my sisters have not been able to finish the tapestry of the night sky. The sun has not been able to rest. So she sighed and angry, May said, with tears streaming down her beautiful face. I must return. Chang realized that he must return May to the heavens so that they will not suffer. He wrapped May's magical robe and watched her flew to the sky along with the magpies. That night, the sun set with no sense of anger and everyone slept contentedly. However, Chang was very sad while singing his sweet yet sad songs. May returned to her celestial home and continued her work on the tapestry of the night. She tossed stars across the sky to remind Chang of her love, but she still misses Chang and so, the tears that fall into her loom become stars that fill the night sky. Eventually, it became a Milky Way that divided the sky into two. Chang saw the shooting stars and remembered May. Then the magpie appeared in his dream again and said, Happiness shall be yours, gentlemen. The way to me is within your reach. Return to the silver pond. There you will find a magpie feather that will take you to me. Go quickly, my friend. Chang hurried down to the pond and saw one feather of magpie. 
He ordered the feather to take him to the heavens where May is waiting. But the Milky Way separated the two of them. So the celestial magpies across the world gather together and form a bridge for May and Chang. May and Chang ran lightly across it into each other's waiting arms, and their voices rang out in joyous song. Okay, so the magpie said to them, when you are together, May cannot work and all the earth suffers, but your love is good and strong. So once a year, we will form a bridge to unite you. You can still see Chang and May in the nighttime sky. On one side of the Milky Way, May is a bright star completing the tapestry of the night sky. On the other side, another bright star, the ever faithful Chang, awaits the seventh day of the seventh month when he can be with his beloved for one special night. All right, so that was the story of the seven sister retold by Cindy Chan. Now this time, we will have to answer some questions about this story. Okay. So we're going to answer six questions about the story of the seven sister. And in this activity, you are free to give your own opinion based on what you have understood from our story earlier. So number one, what did the seven beautiful maidens do in heavens? Yes, the maidens wove the glorious tapestry of the night sky. Okay, how about number two? Why was Chang unhappy at the start of the tale? Yes, because Chang feels empty or he's missing something in his life. Okay, so that was it. Number three, how did Chang get May to stay with him on Earth? So, as what the map I said, Chang hid May's magical outer robe for without it, she can't return to the heavens. Number four, why was the sun angry? Okay, so because May was not able to finish the tapestry of the night sky. So how about number five? What did May decide to do with the angry sun? So, in order to make the sun not angry anymore, May decide to return to the heavens and complete the tapestry of the night sky. And lastly, how was Shang finally able to rejoin May? So, the magpie appeared again to his dream and said, you have to use the magpie feather found in the silver pond. Font. Okay, so now we'll proceed with our next activity. And this time we're going to describe the main characters in the story. So you remember who are the main characters of the story? You got it right. This time we're going to describe May and describe Chang. Okay, so first we will describe first May. So what are the characteristics of May? So May is, first, May is the fairest of all the seven sisters and also the cleverest. She is also very talented. But lastly, May is sad and lonely. So how about Chang? What are the characteristics of Chang? So Chang is hardworking. Chang is, Yes, Chang is hardworking, but he is unhappy. And for the next one, Chang at the end is very faithful, kind, and patient. Okay, so now, how are we able to answer these questions about the story? Oh, the seven sister. How are we able to make conclusions or guesses that we have answered regarding the story? It is because of? Yes, it is because of our conclusions or we call as inferences and our opinions. So this time, we're going to discuss about making inferences and giving opinions. So first, what is inference? Okay, so inference is a guess made 
or a conclusion based by the reader and is not taken from the actual text or the story. So the reader makes inferences using clues found in the story. For example, what the character says or what happens in the story or etc. The important events found in the story. So it helps us to give conclusions based on what their experiences and what they had understood. So what we have understood by reading the story, we can get our inferences using the clues. Okay, so this time we're going to make inferences based on the stories, the seven sisters. So number one, what natural events does the seven sister explain? Yes, so we have there natural events mentioned rainbows, polar day or midnight sun. And lastly, the shooting star. So this midnight sun is the part where the sun did not set or did not move a bit even when it is already eight o'clock in the evening. So number two, what makes the story a how and why tale? Yes, so it is a how and why tale because some puzzling natural events that happened occasionally or unexpectedly happened in the story. So there are natural events mentioned in the story. That makes us wonder how and why it happened. Okay, so number three, how is the story about the power of love? Yes, so their love was very strong, even if Chang has to let May return to heaven. Chang waited patiently and remained faithful to May. So number four, how is it also a story about compassion, that feeling for others? that makes us merciful and kind. So we have found out in the ending part of the story, Chang returned May to the heavens to end everyone's suffering and sacrifice his love for May. Okay, so they can't be together for a long time, very long time. So Chang decided to let May return. Okay, so that is how we make inferences. We give conclusions, we give our guesses based on what we had understood from the story. So now, this time we're going to make, since we're done with making inferences, we're going to have, or we're going to give our opinions. So Okay, so May left Chang in order to help her sisters and the suffering of the people. So would you make the same decision as May if you were in her position? Why or why not? So we have different opinions, but yes, we could make, we could also make the same decision as May if it means it could save everyone's suffering, right? Okay, so how about number two? If you could send a skywriting message to Chang and May, what would you say? Oh. Okay, so since their love is very strong and very kind, so we could only address to Chang and May that they could still, they could remain patient to each other and wait for each other until fate would give them the chance that they will be able to be together and meet again, right? Okay, so that's how we give opinions. So. I know all of us or most of us have different opinions about how we perceive the story or how what we have understood or how we are able to grasp the meaning of the story, right? Okay, so this time we're going to have a short quiz. So it will be very easy. It only have, we only have part three for this short quiz. The, yeah, let's start with matching type, letter part one, which is matching type, identifying characters, occurrences. Then part B, which is the fill in the blanks. And for part C will be the short essay about making inferences, right? So, so since A and B are very easy, let's just answer it right away, okay? So for... Part A, matching type, identify characters or trends. So let's just identify who or who's the owner of these lines. Okay, so number one, my life would be complete if this fair maiden were part of it. So it is? Yes, Chan. So how about number two, the sun is angry. 
the sun is angry. Who said this line? Yes, the answer is the landowner. So how about number three? It is my fault. So we know exactly who said this line. Yes, it is May. So how about the last number? Happiness shall be yours, gentlemen. So we have read it two times in the story. So it is the magpie. Very good. So now let's proceed with the part two, which is the fill in the blanks. So, so these items are already found in the story. So I bet you already have an idea or know what is the correct answer. So number one. Blank is the youngest, yet the most clever and fairest of them all. Yes, the first and the most clever of them all is May. How about number two? In the heavens above, seven beautiful maidens wove the glorious blank of the night sky. It is, yes, the apes tree. Number three, but your love is good and strong. So once a year, we will form a bridge to unite you, said the, yes. The magpie said. So number four, the ever faithful Chang awaits the blank day of the blank month when he can be with his beloved for one special night. So it is seventh day of the seventh month. Okay, very good, everyone. Now for the short essay, it's your turn to make your inferences. So it only has two items, three points each. So make sure to read the sentences below and make an inference just based on the story, The Seven Sister. Okay? All right, so let's proceed with the last one, which will be your homework. For your homework, kindly answer this inferences worksheet six. The copy of this worksheet will be sent to your LMS after our session this morning, okay? So, Please read each passage, then respond to the questions. Okay, you have to make logical inferences in this one based on what you have understood in the context. Okay, so I guess that was all for our lesson for today. I hope you learned a lot. So goodbye and thank you class for listening. Thank you for listening.